everyone and welcome back to our Shaolin Talks. Hello, my name is Martine Niven. I'm Janine Brower. Um, and today um, we're going to be having a, a great talk with you guys. Um, I know that this year has been pretty tough for everybody um, with what's been going on. Um, but actually, in some ways, it's been a great time to kind of explore our local area, um, maybe get out to places that you haven't been to before, um, uh, get out in nature. Um, so today's topic, as you know, or some of you might know, um, we're going to be exploring um, what's great about Southampton. So we here at UK Shaolin Temple, we're here based in Southampton City, and we think it's a pretty awesome place to be in. And we thought, um, who better than to explore this amazing city with us than uh, to have the leader of the council himself join us. So we've got... Um, Councillor Christopher Hammond joining us today. Hello, Christopher. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Nice to see you, mate. Thank you for coming out at the weekend. <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah. Um, so you've not put on the good weather, but uh, oh, nevertheless, we're here. And yeah, it's so great. So it's really, really great to have you have you here. So um, Councillor Hammond has been sponsoring us and um, he's been following us and supporting us all the way through our time here in Southampton City um, and he has some great knowledge and some secrets to share <laughs> with us about, about the city. <laughs> so, um, uh, but uh, out there, I mean our viewers out there, they probably don't know actually what it is to be a councillor or what you actually do in the council. I mean you were telling me we've had lots of conversations about what you do mm. and I think it's amazing and you just always on the go constantly. It's so difficult to get hold of you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but can you, can you let the viewers know exactly what you do? So um, being a councillor is um, the elected position for a certain amount of people that live in what we call wards. Okay. So in this area you would have three councillors who would be elected by the public okay. and it's their job to go to the uh, civic centre yep. and vote on policies and ideas about the direction of travel for the city right. and also the services that everyday residents um, receive. Yep. Um, so there's over 700 services that the council provides. Wow. Um, so they take decisions about things that are immediately happening. And they take yep. decisions for the long term as well. So right. that's the role of being a councillor. Okay. Um, it's also their job to um, have uh, communication with residents, explain what's going on, right. but also to help residents if they run into issues and problems mm. uh, okay. within the council or externally uh, and be their champion. And then <laughs> you've got a cabinet and then a leader who sets the overall tone and the strategic direction for right. the city council. and all of our partners. Wow. Yeah, sounds quite challenging, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got your work. Especially yeah. recently. Yeah, um, I can imagine. It, it's, um, yeah. So dealing with the COVID, and I'm sure we'll come mm. back to that yeah. at some point, but it's involved the entire organisation marshalling to mm. making sure that we keep people safe mm. uh, and that we're supporting businesses mm. and that we're helping a sort of a new direction for the renewal and the recovery of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're definitely going to come yeah. back to that in a second because we're, what we're going to be exploring uh, today is uh, about Southampton City. So obviously being a councillor, you know a lot about the city. You're helping the city all the time and coming <laughs> up with, looking after different problems that are people coming up with. Is there, is there anything that you find kind of particularly challenging about your role? Is there anything that you... That you think, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> Can I, really today, yeah. today of all days. <laughs> I, I mean, it's um, it's quite a interesting role. Uh, so when I became leader, I'll never forget the first sort of conversation I had with the senior officers in the council. Yeah. Um, and it was okay. Well, what do you want to do? Now, if you go into any new job, you usually get sort of a bit of an induction, handover, or training. Yeah. Um. And uh, because it's such an unusual job, yeah. I expected some sort of uh, kind of guidance. Or guidance. Oh, yeah. uh, and it was just very much, well, no, you're the leader of the council now. What's, what's, you give us the guidance. Wow, are you so, kidding me, right? And it was just literally like that. So it was, okay, wow, right. Okay, this is what we'll do then. Um, so it was just, Whoa. Uh, just very sort of bizarre mm. kind of uh, to take on this role and, and not have anything sort of wrap around straight away. Um, but things are challenging. It is a very challenging role. Yeah, uh, I can the imagine. challenge is not to get bogged down too much mm -hmm. in the day to day because there right. are obviously always issues. There are things that people's problems you need to help them with. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't lose the bigger track picture. Of the bigger picture yeah. and where you're trying okay. to take the city or where the city's evolving or the support mm. or the interventions that you need. Yeah. So it, it, it's about getting that balance, which is quite tricky when you've got 
uh, sort of a lot of noise and a lot of media kind of yeah, I can imagine. Things, yeah. Yeah. Um, and trying to do it. So getting a balance is always a bit of a challenge, mm. I think, for all councillors and all politicians in yeah. the city. What would you What would you say when you when you first stepped into that position? How long have you been uh, the leader for? Uh, so it's, for, it's about two and a half years. Two and a half years. So that I've been leader for. Wow. And when you first stepped into that position, what is the first thing that you said? What is the first decision that you had to make? Big decision that you had to make for the city. Oh, the first big decision. Mm. Uh, it was around the um, capital contract. So we had contracted a uh, private company to provide a number of our services. Right, okay. Uh, the council, oh. so um, it was IT, customer service, uh, procurement, so where we buy things. Um, and it was about the future of that contract. Wow, um, okay. So £13 million contract. Whoa. Uh, over 300 staff members as part of that. Wow. So that was the first big major decision uh, that was sort of in the in tray uh, yeah. when I took over. And you were kind of got all your team together and they all followed you and they're like, yes, we can yeah. do this. <laughs> <laughs> if only they were that positive all the time. Uh, I mean, we need to bottle that and yeah, okay. give it to them, I think. Um, but uh, yes, I mean, obviously, uh, changes uh, takes time. Change is quite slow sometimes. Yeah. Um, and you need to articulate and understand why you take the decision so you need yeah. to make sure you've got all the data you need to make sure that you've consulted people you've mm -hmm. triangulated the evidence mm -hmm. um, and then you need to take people with you once you've made a decision and you have people as part of that decision yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. you then need to go out to public consultation so um, a lot in it, it. It, there a is lot a lot there. to do it's not just a case of me sitting back and going we're doing this we're doing this we're doing that yeah. uh, which a lot of people think is there's a yeah. huge process yeah. um, to try and get anything done are you do you live in the city Yes. Yeah, you live in the city. So, uh, do, do you go out in the city and go visit lots of different places? Is of that course, part of your I, job? I, I, I spend all of my time here practically. Um, I've walked every street in the city. You've uh, walked every street? Practically every street, I would wow. say. Um, so, we do a lot of, uh, prior to the lockdown and COVID, yeah. we would do a lot of door knocking. So, we would knock on residents' doors yeah. and we'd speak to people and say, you've got any issues or comments yeah. or feedback on stuff yeah. that we're doing? So, you're actually the best person to talk about why Southampton City is so great. Oh, because I, you've like walked uh, everywhere. Oh, you've I seen everything. There are others who would do just as equally a good job, <laughs> I, I hope. But so, uh, my <laughs> first question to you is, is um, if somebody was coming to Southampton and they'd never been here before, why would they want to come here? What makes Southampton such a, a great place to, to come and visit? Why would you why would you come over here over, over any other city? Well, it's the best city on the south coast. <laughs> of course. At least, and it's one of the best cities in the UK. Uh, so if we take that as granted, um, we then look at um, Southampton's got a fantastic history, heritage, uh, cultural offer, yeah. diversity yeah. Um, so it's a city which is shaped by its past but not held back by its yeah. past right, so okay. some sort of cities and places are sort of are always looking backwards to their past at sort of a, a, a golden age but Southampton yeah. uh, although it respects its past and is proud of its heritage and history yeah always looks forward it's a city of innovation it's a city yeah. of excitement it's a very young city we've got lots of young people here we've yeah. got two fantastic universities mm -hmm. uh, which has a really good dynamic the people are friendly. Um, we are we welcome the world here with the cruise ship industry yeah, that we've got right. here. Uh, prior to COVID, we had over 500 cruise ship visits a year. That's um, amazing, isn't lots it? Lots of people yeah. from all over the world coming, yeah. shopping, uh, speaking to people, interacting, <laughs> seeing our facilities. Yeah. Um, and they always say this is a very friendly place to come. Yeah. So I think it, it's friendly. It's got fantastic heritage um, mm. and history. Mm. Our walls, um, the you know the cultural offer yeah. around the theatre. Um, some of the great stories. So this is where the Spitfire was made. Yeah. Uh, this is where uh, the Titanic set sail yeah, from. Absolutely. Um, th there are so many wonderful stories like that, and we celebrate that as part of our heritage. Wow. Uh, and also some great innovation and future technology stuff is being invented and researched right here, right now. Really? What? What? What's that then? So. Uh, in what, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at the universities and some of the sort of the health sector and um, sort of the tech companies we've got yeah. here. Okay. Um, so we've got one of the uh, most important um, cancer immunization centers here oh, in the city okay. where they're I researching cures and new fightbacks against different forms of cancer. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's only one of very special ones in the world. Wow. Um, also, we've got the National Oceanography Center, uh, only one of six in the world 
who are oh, wow. mapping and charting the oceans. Yeah. Um, and there is wow, so much amazing. we don't know about our own planet and uh, yeah, the oceans right. and the seas. Um, and they're doing some fantastic work there. So this really is a city of innovation um, around tech and IT. Um, we've got fantastic resource in uh, developing AI yeah. um, and new technologies. That's so great. there is, this is a really innovative city as well yeah. as a city that's got some great heritage. I've, um, uh, well, me and Jeanine have been doing a little bit of research on the city. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a little bit of research and we've come up with some, some facts that we found out about mm -hmm. the city. Um, and the first fact, um, which is going back to your culture, um, was I didn't realise that there have been a lot of archaeological digs in Southampton and the finds that they found are dating all the way back to the Stone Age. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. That's amazing. And um, obviously, as you were saying, um, Councillor Hammond, that when you come to Southampton City, there are lots of um, places of heritage that you can go and visit. We've got these amazing um, medieval walls all throughout the city, um, which are, are great. I went to visit one the other day. There's a place called um, Pig in the Wall. Have you been there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. I love it there. But it's like it's like in the middle of these like medieval walls, and you kind of yeah. sat there you're having a little drink or a cup of tea, and then you're like, wow. This is amazing, you know, actually there's yeah. so much culture here, it's unbelievable. And there's other you places... You just want to touch the wall and go yeah, like, Yeah, it's like, well, I can feel the energy of the past, you know? And you can touch the wall. Yeah, you literally yeah. can. Um, you can. Our history isn't hidden away, yeah. as yeah. in it's not behind fences. It's yeah. all there, you can all see it, touch it, feel it. Yeah. Um, and it's all hidden around the city as well, so there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great to walk around mm. and see, so old, old town, yeah. and see some of those old buildings and, yeah. and the real treasures that we've they got. They are, they're so sweet, aren't they? And they've got the bar gate. There's one in the, at the end of the shopping parade, like a bar gate. You can go see that. It was like, that was like um, the city wall, the beginning of the city walls, like where people would guard the city. Um, and then yeah, you've got the medieval walls. And there's a, lo there's a lovely mm. place that I visited the other day. We did a, we did a photo shoot for our Kung Fu. Uh, do you remember? Uh, yeah, the Abbey. Yeah, Netley the Ab Abbey. Netley Abbey. That's beautiful yeah. ruins it's, it's there It's a really well. nice place. Yeah, and there's... Um, um, uh, Councillor Hammond, you were mentioning about the, uh, the, the Titanic. We're going to come to that a little bit as well. But you can, <laughs> so there's so many like, different uh, cultural treats um, that you can really experience when you, when you come here. And actually, if you are interested in that side, you know, in the historical side of the city, I'm sure there's lots of museums that people can yeah, visit. Yeah, you can go to the uh, Sea City Museum. Yeah, so that's if, really if you're good. interested in the mm. Titanic, Sea City Museum. Yeah. Uh, we've got Tudor House as oh, well. Oh yeah, that's mm. right, Tudor House. Which is uh, a fantastic example of, of an, one of the old buildings, um, so one of the old houses. Yeah. And you can get to see how people lived um, hundreds of years ago. Wow, yeah, nice. that's so cool. <laughs> so people, when they're coming from other countries to come mm. and travel and come here, um, they're really... I know when I've had friends come from China, they really want to see something that's traditionally English. Like the old stuff. That old yeah. stuff. They want to see thatched houses. They want to see like really in quintessential English. So that house is probably a really amazing yeah, place to go. Yeah, sure. Can you go inside? You can. Have you uh, been in there? Of course. <laughs> of course, it's a council facility. Um, yeah. So it's a great, really good um, exhibition. There's lots of good stuff there. Yeah. Um, so if people are coming from uh, around the world to see it, definitely yeah. Tudor House should be on your list as in the heart of old town oh, and there's right. some great other sort of little gems hidden and dotted about there cool. so wow we've got we've got another fact for you yeah i mean southampton is quite a big city isn't it they have like quarter of a million people quarter it, of a million yeah, people yeah quarter of a million people that's a lot of people the, it's the largest <laughs> city in in hampshire yeah largest city in hampshire and um yeah i mean southampton has a lot of ways to get out and about you know mm. like transport wise there's an airport maybe we start from oh, biggest yeah, to yeah, smallest they have an so we've got an airport um you can obviously arrive by train uh, train mm. lines are pretty um connected so it's mm. like you you hardly ever wait if wherever you have to mm. go and yeah car obviously you can yeah. come by car um and then they introduce bike lanes now, or more and more bike Didn't lanes. Didn't you introduce bike lanes? <coughs> <laughs> it's a team effort. Oh, it's a team is it really? Um, so, yes, so there, so there are new cycle Good. sort of highways segregated in yeah. some respects. Um, the way that we move and get about cities um, is going to change. Um, globally, mm. what we're seeing mm. is more people Absolutely. wanting to live in cities. Mm. Uh, and globally, we're seeing uh, a bigger focus on walking, mm -hmm. on cycling, mm. on mass transit, so trams, mm. trains. It's better for the environment, right? Absolutely. Uh, better yeah. for air pollution, better for mm. the environment. 
Um, so what you're seeing in Southampton is we're trialling out some new schemes about um, not taking space away from people, but giving more choice. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. How about electric scooters? Uh, well, <laughs> currently, the legislation uh, and the law is, says that you can't ride an electric scooter <laughs> on the road or the pavement. So yeah. I think they're looking at potentially changing that. Yeah, but, um, yeah like seeing electric yeah. scooters whiz down. Oh, yeah, I've seen some, exciting, yeah, yeah. Exciting, but it needs to be done in a safe way, of course. I yeah. can see you on one of those, like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to walk anywhere, you're like, zoom, zoom, <laughs> get around the city. <laughs> I'll give it a go. Once it's legal, that's safe. Um, when people are visiting here, they have, um, I know they have this new bike scheme set up where you can just kind of like, um, I know in China they have like this, it's great, you know, you can grab a bike and then you can just like travel around anywhere and they do it in, in uh, other places mm. as well that I've visited around. Mm. So they have this here in Southampton? Uh, we tried it for a while. Um, How did it go? Uh, it was a, mi a bit of a mixed bag, uh, I think it's fair to say. Um, but what we found is, um, so we're trying out different transport schemes and ideas. Yeah. Some work, some, some aren't as successful. Um, yeah. But we felt it's probably better to kind of help facilitate people who have already got bikes, who want yeah. to use bikes yeah. in that way. Okay. Uh, but that's not to say that we won't look at future schemes and future options around bike rental yeah. or e-scooter rental if yeah. that's the way that the country Ooh, that might be quite moves cool. towards. Yeah. Does it, do you find that there's quite a lot of tourists that come to Southampton? Absolutely. To, uh, Southampton, how, how many? Uh, Southampton, is an <laughs> Sorry, <international, laughs> Southampton is an international city. I mean, the thing is, some of these cruise ships that come in can have anywhere up to around 5,000 people in them. Wow, yeah, okay. 500 to come in uh, a day. We've also got the airport, mm. as you mentioned, so we do get people sort of coming here or uh, using Going, that as yeah. a drop-off yeah. point or an embarkation point. Um, we have... Uh, Ships that come that are around commerce, um, the okay. big container ships that come from all around mm. the world, yeah. uh, they've got crews. So it's also not just about the tourists, it's about the crews on those ships yeah. that okay. come in and uh, yeah, spend yeah. time here in the city. Um, we also get a lot of people come down from London wanting to see the New Forest, see Southampton, see Winchester, Portsmouth. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, there's a mm. huge industry. It's a very international city. And it always mm. has been a very international city as well. So really? we've been a port going all the way back to Roman times. Um, wow, and Southampton yeah. has always, there's some great stuff in the archives about how um, people from all around the world have found it a welcoming um, and safe place to come to, yeah. um, which I think is nice. It speaks to the, the character of Southampton people <laughs> for yeah. thousands of years. Yeah, I mean, me, I'm going on to that, that, um, that uh, topic of safety. So um, obviously, People are very concerned at the moment, obviously, with the COVID and everything and, and uh, going out to visit places. And obviously, people are, are finding that they're, they're not going able to go abroad. Um, they might choose to, to go and visit somewhere somewhere local or they might try uh, go and visit places that they haven't been before. Um, and if they were to choose to come to Southampton, possibly, you know, they would want to know that it was a safe place for them to stay, maybe they bring their family. Um, how, how would they know, so people coming to Southampton, how would they know that this is a, a safe place for them to visit? The, uh, how could you reassure them? It's a good question. Them? I mean, there's, there's, there's two aspects to it, isn't there? There's the COVID aspect around safety and yeah. making sure that people um, are uh, keeping safe and keeping their family safe uh, mm. and businesses are taking steps and the council are taking steps to keep people safe. So that, mm. there's that aspect to it and then there's a sort of crime aspect to it. Okay. So, um, Around the COVID safety, so the council publishes the infection rates uh, that, we, that we're aware of. So if people are concerned about that aspect, they can look on our social media channels. Mm. We've got a very good website, which is a hub of information. Okay. Um, I've been publishing videos weekly. Um, yeah. Almost yeah. as frequently I'd as you, you guys. Yeah. Um, no, you get like a weekly newsletter. Uh, I get more yeah, weekly yeah, newsletter. <laughs> so Let's see what you're up to. Talk about the local aspect to it. Um, so... You, people could look at those, um, but no, we're taking a lot of steps to try and keep mm. people safe. Um, mm. We need to make sure that people are following the government guidelines, so that's wherever you go. So yeah. we're making sure you're washing your hands for 20 <coughs> seconds, making sure that you're wearing a face mask where you need to, mm. yeah. um, whether you're going in shops, etc. Yeah. Um, keeping that social distancing. Um, and if we all start getting complacent, then that's when we're going to see the local flare-ups. And that's when, mm. you know, like you're seeing mm. in other cities. Mm. So at the moment, we haven't got that situation in Southampton. Mm. Um, and, you know, that's hopefully good. we won't yeah. need to. Um, it's quite a low risk area, isn't it? Well, it's, um, 
we've got our, you know, we've got our challenges. I'm not going to be complacent <laughs> okay. um, and say that. So we need to do a lot of work to make sure that we keep people safe, which we are doing. Okay, that's um, great. But as, as far as crime's concerned, you know, we are a city. We do have crime. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of our students and our visitors, they say this feels like a very safe city to walk around. Yeah. And um, what we found is no matter what we say on the statistics, mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. people's perception which trumps the feeling on crime. So yeah. people always tell us it's, they feel quite safe. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say everywhere is safe and people need to be vigilant. Mm. But on, on the whole, Southampton is a very safe and welcoming mm. city. I but think it is. I would feel safe like going out on my own and sort of going around to theatres or to, out for a restaurant. I wouldn't feel, you know, unsafe in this area. Mm. You know, no, so, I no, I don't. I don't think so. But and also we have a lot of um, we work quite closely um, with. The, um, the Police, Hampshire Constabulary yeah. and they're always sending us information on how to help the local community and they're really great they're really great um, constabulary they, they do a lot of work within the communities and making sure um, that various communities all, all the communities are very uh, are safe um, we've been doing work with the students recently in the university and making sure that they're safe as well so yeah I, I, I agree with you I think it's a really I think it's a safe place uh, safe place to, to come uh, and spend your time yeah. here yeah <laughs> I think that, that also brings you um, a bit to to our next fact, right? Okay. Because I think you, we talked about students and we talk about a lot of people and uh, people can get their creativity um, up in the city. It's so, a really creative so, city, isn't it? Um, there has been a, quite a big uh, or a lot of talent coming out of Southampton City. Yeah, right? that's right. There is, yeah, <laughs> there is a lot of talent coming out, yeah. We've got like, um, so when I did my research, apparently... Uh, Ken Russell was born in South was born in Southampton, so he's a mm -hmm. obviously a famous film director. Um, you have um, lots of musicians have come from Southampton, like uh, Craig David. I've seen the plaque. The plaque yeah. is right outside the front of your offices, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah I can just see it there. So he was uh, he was born and he, he was raised on the Golden Grove Estate, which is not too far from where we are filming this this video. Is it? Uh, wow, cool. So he was getting all his inspiration from Southampton for his, uh, <laughs> his lyrics. He loves the city and he's. Uh, does he come back? He does come back and he always sort of does things to help us out, so which is cool. really good. Oh, that's, that's good. cool. That's so cool. Um, and and also um, this is linked to another fact to do with. Um, uh, sort of creative talent and this is going back uh, in, in time to 18, 1811 um, to a very famous lady who wrote a book here called yeah. Sense and Sensibility. So, yeah. Yeah. so Jane Austen spent some time. I think yeah. a lot of her novels are uh, situated in the south anyway, south uh, England, yeah. but uh, that particular one um, she wrote in Southampton. Um, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? It's fantastic. Mm. I mean, the links that yeah. we've got and the heritage. Um, and Hampshire is a great place to come and visit. Um, mm. Obviously, Southampton should be number one on your destination, <laughs> Southampton. Um, but if you look at sort of, we've got the new forest on our doorstep. Um, yeah. You've also got the coast. You've mm. got yeah. the uh, very historic old city of Winchester. Uh, yeah, which is okay. definitely worth a visit where mm. they think is where sort of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table <laughs> oh, and all of that kind of heritage comes yeah. from. So Hampshire um, has got sort of some yeah. fantastic uh, things to go and do yeah, and visit. Loads for all the family. Yeah. And yeah, if you've got visitors who come down or, you know, if you come yeah. study here, yeah. you won't be short of things to do. Yeah. Right? I, like a few years ago, my parents and my aunt and uncle, they came on a cruise ship. So they basically came from Europe. Uh, a few visited a few European cities and then they yeah. stopped in Southampton as well and we were like oh, okay when you're here we just make a day out mm -hmm. so we basically we hired a car then we had some breakfast down at the um, where they dock the cruise ships yeah. oh, cool. um, and then we went we actually went to um, the new forest and explored the oh, area so and lovely. Then basically we had a whole day and then like six o'clock we dropped them back off on the ship and yeah, yeah they like, had a Bye. really good day <laughs> it's nice to have family visit yeah. but it's nice to see them go again yeah exactly <laughs> yeah hi bye yeah. off you go on your cruise ship yeah bye <laughs> No, no, it was, really, it was really, really nice. And they loved it as well. They loved it. Mm. There's some yeah. really great places um, to have uh, to eat here as well. Don't, don't you have a little, do you have a little restaurant here? I do. So I was going to say what my favourite restaurant is. That's what I was going to say. It's that. my own. <laughs> What's your restaurant? Uh, so it's Popsies, which is a pizza place in Bedford Place. Do you eat yeah. pizza all day long? Uh, more than I should. <laughs> 
it's just <laughs> there's loads of there's loads of great restaurants as well there's all different yeah. types of food that you can have here you can have thai you can have chinese um, there's some wonderful uh, chinese restaurants that i go and visit there's a love and also uh, on the outskirts as well places that you wouldn't necessarily mm. think they've got these amazing restaurants i go to the the garden restaurant which is a fantastic place to go to and have some chinese you've been there haven't you I have. it's great. You, yeah some uh, yeah. great food there and um, they've got some good pubs as well yeah they have like, some really good like pubs. this rockstone pub rockstone oh, right, yeah, pub i really like that one yeah. <laughs> The Duke of Wellington is yeah. a great pub as well. Where's, where's that? Is that uh, where you go? It's in Old Town, yeah. It's, they do some fantastic food there. A very oldie worldy pub. Is it? Oh. Um, hundreds of years old. Um, so oh, that's so another cool. Another great yeah. place to go and visit. Yeah. But you, you, can, you can find whatever kind of food you like in mm. Southampton. Um, yeah. And people come from all around the region to come yeah. here because of the choice we've got, the retail offer, but yeah. also the restaurants. Mm. Um, mm. And there are some, not just in the city centre, as you say, all around dotted about the city, mm. some great food places. Yeah, Is good. there any food you haven't tried yet you want to try? Uh, oh, good <laughs> question. Um, do you know what I eat out quite a lot? <laughs> <laughs> So I've, I've probably tried most of the places I've wanted to try in the city. Um, no, I don't think there are. I think I've, I think I've managed to go to most of the places. But it's great because you've got so much choice that you never yeah. feel um, you never feel like you've run out of things yeah. to go and try and do. But, what's, um, what's your favourite? What's your fa obviously oh, well, not including your own one? Your your one taken out. What's your What's your favourite food to have in Southampton? That's difficult, isn't it? Because there are so many great. Or oh, it depends places. on the mood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the yeah. mood. Mine's, um, mine's uh, breakfast. I breakfast. really love breakfast. And where's the best place to get a fried breakfast in Southampton? Um, there's so many different places. <laughs> I like, like the to go artisan, to the artisan, quite they go to the, yeah. the, the, the artisan because it's got lots of people there, you know, the, the, the feeling of the place, there's lots of stuff going on. Um, I've just discovered the pig in the wall. The pig in the wall's very good. Yeah, and yeah. They, make all, they get all their produce from their farms. In yeah. The yeah, that's farms. right. It's like local <laughs> growing. Yeah, and um, yeah, there's lots of different places like no, that. There are. I mean, a couple of my favourites are Faux Vietnam in Portswood. Uh, they do okay. some fantastic food mm. there. Wow. Um, the Coriander Lounge in the city centre. Uh, oh, great, cool. uh, great Indian there. Um, there's uh, the garden, the garden that you spoke about. Yay, garden <laughs> which is restaurant. A, which is a great uh, new <laughs> addition uh, to the city, really yeah. good. Um, and there's some great places in West Quay. Mm. Uh, the Duke of Wellington is a great pub, and uh, they do a yeah. fantastic Sunday roast there. Good. Uh, is there um, traditionally British? Oh, very British. <laughs> yeah, very British. Uh, is there lots of events happening in Southampton? Because I know you've got obviously you've got the Isle of Wight, you know, and you've mm. had lots of festivals going on there, like Bestival and and things like that. Do we have any? Um, events that happen in Southampton if people are coming to visit they might be able to come along and, and U usually yes um, <laughs> yeah. but obviously the kind of usual suite of events that we would have has been stripped right back because we need to make sure people are safe mm -hmm. first yeah. and foremost um, so there won't be a big events calendar this year but you know in future years as things get a little bit easier mm. if you know as the sort of the virus naturally goes through its course um, mm. and hopefully we get a, a vaccine then we can then have big the big events that we used to have mm. and yeah. big celebrations but yeah. um, no we I mean last year we had a phenomenal amount of different events yeah um, next year we're bidding for something called city of culture oh, which is a yes. sort of a big kind of celebration of all the yeah. cultural stuff and lots yeah. of different things happening so I'm sure that the yeah. uh, temple will be part of that yeah we can bring our dragons <laughs> and celebrating all the dragons wonderful are. things that you guys do <laughs> we had so we had the council been supporting our Chinese New Year for some time now and uh, last year we had um, we had the mayor come and do some lion dancing actually took yeah. on the uh, <laughs> challenge of uh, learning how to lion dance he was absolutely awesome wasn't he so yeah, yeah it was brilliant you can you can see some footage of it you can see like him doing the lion dancing yeah, it was fantastic. It was good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's brilliant. I, I mean, there are lots of different um, uh, events happening. There's the there's the Mar I think Mala. At the yeah, and also I think this year is like the Mayflower 400. Yeah. Um, so it's like cultural event, and um, you probably will see some of this in the next few weeks from yeah. us as well. Yeah, so, we're going to cover this. Um, basically, exploring the culture and how people settled here and so on. Mm. So I think that's one this year yeah there's a lot kind of, of kind of events that we're doing online yeah. celebrations mm. um mm. and we're doing things in a little bit more of a sort of a creative way mm. to make sure yeah. people could be part of it but no yeah. the mayflower 400 um so that last weekend we celebrated that anniversary so yeah. the mayflower ship uh, okay for those uh, maybe anyone who's watching from America, <laughs> um set sail from southampton uh and then went to america and it founded yeah. the first uh english 
colonies mm. uh, okay. there. Uh, so that was from Southampton. So wow. another, one of our, yeah. our key sort of his historical events that happened here in <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's right. <laughs> Um, apparently, we uh, Southampton is twinned with lots of different other countries. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yep. Um, and one of the countries that it's um, well, one port that we're twinned with is Qingdao, is a, where the beer comes from. I don't know whether if there's any Chinese viewers out there. Like Qingdao Pijiao, <laughs> yeah, it's a very popular beer in China. <laughs> so apparently, Southampton City, Southampton Port, is twinned with this this port as well. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And. And we're twinned with other places, or we have connections with other places around the world? Yes, we are. Uh, so recently, we twinned with uh, Miami-Dade County. Uh, Whoa. So it's, um, we had the mayor of Miami-Dade came to Southampton, mm. uh, and we signed a sort of agreement between the two cities, uh, which Whoa. was about sort of exploring sort of international trade. Uh, so we've got two big, significantly important ports. Um, oh, wow, okay. So making sure there's links between those and also between yeah. the two cities because of some of the, the similarities. Um, there are obviously some significant differences <laughs> between the two cities. Yeah, where's as well. our palm trees yeah. and our beach? <laughs> but it was nice to uh, be able to sort of host that reception and, okay. and make those links because Southampton's always faced out, and you know we uh, sort of have been described as the gateway to the world mm, uh, yeah. because of our port, because we're always facing outwards. Mm. So sort of twinning or partnerships with other cities um, mm. is important to sort of build those links, mm. um, especially when we do get sort of that, either it's sort of that commerce trade or mm. that cultural kind of exchange or the educational yeah. kind of exchanges, yeah. sort of, which are just as important. Yeah. Did he, did he like it here? He did. He, he had did he have time. a cup of tea? Did he have fish and chips? He had, he had a cup of tea uh, and he had, I made him put milk in it as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was, um, uh, I'm not sure he entirely Reluctant. enjoyed it. Reluctant. <laughs> uh, but uh, he said it was an interesting, uh, interesting beverage. Um, so, uh, yeah, we take for granted you must have milk in your tea. Uh, yeah, you exactly. Know, it's so important. So, so quintessentially British. Yeah, fantastic. I am um, when you were when you were talking about um, uh, the ports and and everything like that. We we have another another fact for you that actually uh, this is one of the busiest. Um, cruise terminals in the UK. I didn't mm. know that. I mean, obviously we see a lot of cruise ships coming in. You can literally just see them like passing through from here, uh, from the Yale Brothers, like what? Um, um, but it's the second largest container port in the UK. Mm -hmm. I think that's, um, when I was doing some research on it, it was saying that when um, Southampton was applying to be a city, um, that that was one of the major um, Factors, uh, yeah, yeah, turning points was the fact that it had such um, an amazing port and great, you know, it was great mm. economically and mm. yeah, so that's um, I think that's fantastic and the, you know we yeah. talking and that also you were mentioning as well about the Titanic <laughs> and saying that, that that actually set sail from from this uh, from this city. Mm. So yeah, so uh, absolutely brilliant. I think this city um, is what, what I like is, is obviously the internationality. You know, you have lots of different nationalities in all kind of places. You know, if it's cultural or like education or in business, um, that's what I sometimes like, like the diversity coming together. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, it's great. So, um, if you uh, just one one last thing before we before we finish <laughs> finish off, um, I know it's been like a really stressful time for everybody out there. Um, but are, are there any places in Southampton that you go to relax, or any places that you go like maybe in some natural natural beauty or natural environment that you would go to? You'd recommend people? Yeah. So what we've seen is a lot of people going out to enjoy our parks and open spaces, mm. and Southampton is a really green city. Um, oh, cool. So we've got some fantastic open spaces. So personally, um, I live near Bitten Park, so I always okay. go around Riverside Park. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. It's lovely to go for a run or a walk yeah. or a cycle through. Um, there are some fantastic parts. The Southampton Common yeah. is yeah. just a jewel in the crown for the city. And yeah. we've got um, a massive stretch of parks that go through the city centre as well. So uh, okay. if I'm having a particularly difficult day <laughs> in my head, you uh, just go relax, out. Yeah. I either go through the city centre parks because um, okay. it's near, it's it's right, right in next the, to it, in the yeah. heart of the city, yeah. or Southampton Common or um, yeah. Riverside Park because they're they're fantastic. Yeah, um, they're fantastic places to go. And also we've got Western Shore. Uh, which Where's is, that? Uh, it, well, it's, it's in Western, Sorry. <laughs> in Walston, so uh, on the east of the, 
<laughs> east of the city. Um, and then that's all our shoreline. And you can see the fantastic ships going back and forth. Mm. Um, and you get some of that sea air as yeah. well, which is always mm. nice. So. It's called Coalshot is a part, is that a part of Southampton? Is that a little bit further out, Coalshot? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a little bit further out. It's a little so, bit further out, yeah. yeah. So we're sort of round, in sort of that. Oh, okay. So Coalshot's a little bit. Oh, a little bit further out. All right, yeah. okay. Yeah, because I know there's lots of different, there's other areas that you can go to if you want, kind of being uh, climbing. climbing. Yeah, they've yeah. got a great climbing yes. wall out. And I just imagine that sort of coastline and that, cli that climbing wall there. There's quite a lot of activities that you can do if you've got young people. You know, obviously, Councillor Hammond was mentioning about um, all the cinemas and the theatres. We've got a great theatre, the Mayflower Theatre, that you can go and visit. Um, and uh, the, the cinema. Have you? Uh, when was the last time you went to the, the cinema? Oh, did, did you go to gosh, the cinema? Um, <laughs> when was the last time you went to the cinema? Uh, uh, last year, I think it was. Last year. Yeah, you don't December, have much time, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're so busy. You're so yeah. busy. <laughs> well, they've been closed, haven't they, for a long yeah, time? Exactly, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. But, um, yes, no, I haven't been to cinema in a while. Bless you. Say. But I, I will go once. Uh, yeah. Once so, um, uh, so, if you... Um, Cal Salmon, if you could choose three tips, um, <laughs> uh, three great tips that you would um, inspire people to come to the city, um, what, what tips would you choose uh, to help people to come uh, and visit? So, fantastic heritage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, heritage. Some of it's hidden, some of it you have to explore, explore. <laughs> and find, which I always mm. think is quite fun. Um, you've got a long stretch of medieval walls and the bar gate and mm. you know the gateway to the city back and forth so that's uh, you know that should inspire lots of people to come here I think yeah it's yeah, they're really fantastic to see um, our parks and our open spaces mm. um, are uh, sort of you know some of the best in in the UK um, recognized mm. um, by different awards as well um, but also <laughs> unusual for a city to have so much green space yeah. so yeah come and see those I mean the common is beautiful and some of the other places I mentioned earlier um, and the third one is I think all of the different cultural things mm. that we've got mm. um, and so you talked about the Mayflower Theatre lots of people come there and mm. um, so it's the culture and the commerce I would say the two <laughs> Um, so, you know, we're a big retail destination. Uh, we've mm. got people come to the Mayflower Theatre from all round. It's a fantastic theatre, puts on some great shows. Yeah. Um, you know, West Quay, uh, the retail offer that we've got mm. on the High Street, mm. uh, and some of the district centres as well, mm. it is worth travelling to. Yeah. So, whatever you want from a city, Southampton's got it, <laughs> um, and it can offer you some uh, a good quality of life. Mm. Uh, it can. Uh, it, it's a great place to have experiences. It's a great place to live, mm. um, work, and play, and have a good time. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really great. Good. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, we just wanted to say thank you so much to Councillor Hammond for coming to to uh, uh, join us. Today, join us yeah. today and on the weekend. You know, <laughs> he's so busy. Honestly, I was chatting to him and he was just telling me all the things that he has to do in a day. It's just, it's just crazy. I don't know how he fits it all in. But, um, yeah. So we just like to say thank you so much for coming to join us. Pleasure. Um, and I hope you'll come back again and join us and, and chat to us again soon. Yeah. Cool. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching today. If you um, feel um, inspired by this talk, and remember, you can when you if you come to Southampton and you come and visit, make sure you come and drop by and say hello down at the temple here um, and also maybe come and visit some of the amazing places in Southampton um, I, I love to shop here as well so there's loads of <laughs> shopping like literally if you love shopping then you can go uh, find some amazing amazing things here so yeah so if you feel inspired by talk let us know um, uh, if you'd like to get involved um, then send us a message um, you can go on to our website which is www.ukshoutlandtemple.com um, and you can send us a message um, and let us know um, what you thought about the talk and how if you want to get involved so um, thank you so much for watching today um, and we will see you we'll see you again next time okay thank you so much bye bye thank now you. Goodbye. bye bye, bye, -bye.